Hey everybody, I am going to make a freeform bowl and I've got a plastic shower curtain and just like a canvas panel that's you know, pretty firm. What I'm going to do is turn it over and just basically So we got it taped nice and smooth so it doesn't crinkle up and move in when you put the resin on it. Make sure I'm on a level surface and you can take crushed glass. Now these are smaller pieces so um, take that into consideration. Sometimes there'll be a dark piece of something in it. Just remove. It's just, I don't know what it is. It's garbage or something. I've seen that a few times, especially in the clear glass. And, you know, you can make it kind of um, random. It doesn't have to be perfectly round. It can kind of go in and out. Now I could also have done this inside of a surface, uh, a mold or something like that. So I'm just kind of making it go in and out. So you kind of get it where you want it. And all the stuff you see under the plastic is on the canvas panel. It's not on the plastic. Just double check in there. I'm going to use the Thin Viscosity Equal Parts A and B. And I don't need more than nine or ten ounces so I'm basically just going to use up what's in this bottle. The point is is you have to have equal parts. I also mark it if it's not a clear container I'll mark it on the outside but if it's not clear then I'll mark it on the inside of the cup. Start my timer, six minutes. Okay, that's six minutes. Now I'm going to start my stopwatch, and that lets me know from this point on how long my working time is, if it's 30 minutes or whatever that I prefer. Since I'm not doing something where I want like flower or bloom kind of effects, um, it's not as important, but I still like to keep an eye on my time. Again, I used the Artist Resin, which is the thinnest viscosity that Counterculture has. And uh, typically I work with medium, but for this one, it didn't really matter on the results. I've got Armor Art White Pigment Paste. And I'm setting up a cup to put it in so I can pipe it when I'm ready. I think what I'm going to use this time is the uh, Aquamarine Dispersion Color. And the teal, which is really close to this color, Bombay Ink with it. I'll intermingle those and use the white and pipe it in. And so basically, I want to let this kind of get to a warming stage before I do put it down because because my crushed glass is pretty fine it's not the bigger crushed glass pieces like something like this where they're bigger chunks that would have made a great a bigger barrier but I really love the color of this so I wanted to use these I want this to thicken up and become really kind of syrupy and like molasses uh, to do that edge before I kind of do things because I don't want it seeping through the uh, and it may anyway a little bit but I'm gonna try to control that just a bit. 
So I'm going to turn the camera off and I'll be back in just a little bit. Okay, I've taken about two ounces of the resin and I put in this um, kind of shimmery, flaky glitter that's kind of light, uh, clear and iridescent and just sparkly. And what it does is it really makes your resin feel thicker than it is. And that's what I'm going to pour over this so it'll be a part of the glittery sparkle and the glass. This is about uh, an ounce to an ounce and a half of resin and I'm going to do a healthy squirt. And I did decide I'm going to use a little of mica pearl shimmer. This is my favorite of all the micas that Counterculture has. It has an iridescent bluish purple cast to it. It's just so beautiful. I am going to add some to my white. Just do a scoop. And this, is, this is a little tiny scoop as you can see compared to the size of my fingertip. I forget where I got it but I use it over and over again because it's you don't really need a lot of mica to um, I don't load my resin up with mica I might use a few scoops at the most okay I want one more scoop looks pretty good I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little bit more white in and I'm not gonna put this in the bag until I'm ready almost to put it in here because um, you can't stir your mixture in the plastic bag in there it's too loose so you want to keep it in your beaker until you are ready have finished stirring it and you're ready to pipe it in the next minute or so so this dispersion color is very highly pigmented and I really only want it to be tinted so I'm going to try very carefully to just put a tiny bit. So I'm just going to stick my stick down in the color, whatever's on the stick, and I'm going to stir that. Make sure to wipe your stick because uh, it'll stick to the stick and you'll have it not mixed into your resin, so you need to wipe several times to really get it mixed in. So that's really the color of the Bombay ink. So maybe on this one, sky blue. And I'm wiping a lot of that off on my, from my stick because I don't want it to be super opaque. I want a little bit of a transparent feeling. So it's still nice and transparent. I'm going to try to put one little tiny drop of ultramarine alcohol ink. This stuff will come out fast so I'm not trying to squeeze it. I basically just touched it to my stick. So this gives a little bit more of a blue feeling. But because it was sky blue that had, you can tell it has a little bit of white in it. So it makes it a little bit more opaque but it's still transparent because I didn't put hardly any of it on my stick and it's been 15 minutes since I've mixed my resin so just again keeping an eye on that I put a little of that into the cup not enough to really change it I just want a few different two different tones This may change the color a bit, the pearl mica. See, now that just took it to the next level in my opinion. <laughs> it's so hard for me not to use a mica in my resin art. I just love the effect that it, it gives. I'm going to put one little drop of ocean green this is Brie Reese 
That was ultramarine and ocean green. I'm gonna do one more drop. Two. Two tiny drops. It's been 20 minutes now. I'll go ahead and transfer my white. You just want to make sure it's really well stirred up before you put it in the bag because after you put it in the bag you can't stir it. So that's in the bag and ready to pipe. I'll cut it right before I want to pipe it, but it's ready. It's been 23 minutes. So it, it's around 30 minutes, including the mixing time. And it, like I said, with thin, you have a little bit longer working time because it's the thinnest one. I do have some clear in my cup. Fill this to make sure it's not getting too hot. I'm going to add just a little bit more. I'm kind of just mixing it up. I'm at 29 minutes. But at least it's not going to keep moving and, and going outwards. I wanted to make sure this was mixed in with my glass so that it wouldn't um, go off of the canvas panel here. And that shimmer is beautiful. I didn't put my gloves on. Shame on me. The cool thing about doing this on a, a shiny plastic is once you're done with it you can just throw it away. You're not having to try to keep it and preserve it. So I have one shower curtain and I've cut it into pieces and you can use it you know for multiple times instead of a or you can make you a silicone dam with a waterproof caulk. So now we're going to pour these lovely colors I haven't done this particular thing before, so every time I do something, it's a surprise, you know what I mean? Mm, I thought it was going to go into the middle. Okay, I'm just using my silicone stick. That gets it moving around. any little blobs so I'm just trying to unblob some areas it's been 40 minutes I'm gonna stop my timer I'm done and um, I don't want to heat it too much risk melting the plastic underneath with the heat the resin didn't really heat up hot like I'm used to with the medium the medium viscosity at 35 minutes or so would have started
turning to plastic it would have been more solid and you wouldn't have been able to move it like I have on the the regular artist resin which is the thinnest viscosity so just keep that in mind that you know you can't with this you have longer to work with it but I also don't use this when I want the bloom flower technique in my coasters and, and such clocks I, um, I use the medium viscosity because I have it timed you know pretty perfectly on that process that worked good adding the glittery stuff to the out, outer portion it kind of kept the, the resin from seeping through the small crystals and I'll wait probably four or five hours and I'll come back and I'll shape this into the shape I want it to be I'll leave the resin on the silicone tool because when it cures you can just peel it right off the tool and makes it nice and easy and then I'm going to just spritz with alcohol and that helps with bubbles on the surface these beautiful holographic tweezers I like to turn my cups over and let the uh, resin kind of go that way to the tops because when you if you leave them turned upside down they get at the bottom they the resin moves down to the bottom and it's harder to peel out this way it's just much easier to peel out once the resin is cured I'm gonna cover it and we'll be back I'm gonna cut the plastic okay so it's still on the plastic shower curtain I want to peek under it This is just saran wrap. Key is not to let it touch itself. Just making sure the saran wrap covers the plastic bowl so it doesn't stick to the plastic bowl. I just want something nice and shiny that it will not adhere to. Okay, I only get one chance. I don't want it centered either. I want it kind of wonky. Now I'm just going to heat it to get it to relax a bit, even though it'll probably relax on its own. So this side had less interest to me, so it's going to be the underside of the bowl. <laughs> okay I got it shaped the way I want it that'll hopefully just hold it we'll be back tomorrow Okay, it's basically unmolded. Isn't that neat how that comes out of the cup? I just love it. They're like their own little entities. So I've got some edges that are a little funky. Um, I'm going to leave some of it, but some of it's sharp. So I'm going to work on getting the edges kind of cleared up a bit. So I finished cutting off the rough edges I wanted to get rid of. So here's the underside and the the two tones of color the blue and the turquoise kind of went together and I don't know if you can see that little bit of an iridescent cast that's that pearl mica powder that has the blue violet so you can kind of see it in the shimmer and it might show better out in the light when I make my video 
and then the inside. I probably did too much white swirls. I had seen a bowl that looked like waves and I just kind of went overboard on the white swirls but it's still pretty. And then as you can see the crushed glass with that beautiful iridescent blue green shimmer is just really pretty around the edges. Looks nice and frothy. There is the bowl and I like it because it's wonky. I like wonky bowls that makes it look more like an art piece to me instead of a it can be a functional bowl if it's only going to be. You could put water in it with floating candles, floating flowers. You can use LD, an LED light in it and light it up at night. You can use chips, candies, cookies. I always say dry goods. You could probably put you know, fruit or something for a party, like cut up fruit. Um, but I tell people not to cook in it, not to microwave it, not to dishwasher it, even though it's heat resistant once it cures to 500 degrees. I don't recommend to people that they heat it, so I usually recommend more dry foods and things being served in it. But uh, you could put a little potted plant in it. There's so many things you can do with it, but I, um, I like it and I'll show it to you outside. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. And please make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Please share with your friends and ask them to subscribe. Check out all the links below the video. Thank you so much and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.